Very good morning to each one of you, my lovely friends. Um, I want to thank you for your patience. This morning we experienced some technical problems because we are uh, trying to reach out. So uh, I'm patient with us and I ask you to still continue to pray for us that the rest of the broadcast will indeed go without any any further challenges. But welcome here and uh, happy Sabbath to each one of you. I can't hear you, but I'm sure you are greeting me. <laughs> Thank you so much for time together. Please allow me once again to remind you of the dangers of the time that we are living that we are living in, particularly with our, our virus that's attacking us relentlessly. Please, folk, let's continue to wash our hands. Let's continue to wear our masks. Let's continue to do all that we can to make sure that that enemy will not come near us. And let us remain prayerful about those who have been infected and those who are affected. And let us remind us that we still have a God who is indeed in control. And so we want to bless those and give them and make them assure of his love and his abiding presence with him. So we as Christians Yes, we are concerned, but we are not perplexed to the point where we forget that we still have Heavenly Father. Let's just pray for those who are infected and affected on Zoom. Right now, I have my uh, technician, my colleague, Brother Papa, because I see there is now about someone else proposing to you. Yes, to you today, a proposal that we dare not reject. Let's ask the Lord's guidance. Heavenly Father, we're going to talk about something very serious today. Please guide us, accompany us, and may we be blessed with the ministry. With Zooming, please forgive us, friends. We're going to get it right now. The devil is uh, uh, wanting me to stop. But uh, we are not going to do that. Can you just get that? Please forgive us. What is that? Small thing there? Oh, there it is gone. Okay. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that if we put Jesus first Everything that we need will be added unto us. Help us not to put those things we need first. Help us to put you first. Then the things will be added. Speak to us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The objective of this morning's sermon, my friends, is to urge you to enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you are already in a relationship with Jesus Christ, this morning, beloved, the objective is for you to rejoice, to thank God that you are in that relationship, and to ask God that this morning you might once again renew your commitment to that relationship. You just want to tell Jesus, Jesus, I'm glad I entered into a relationship with you some time ago. And this morning, I just want to renew my vows of commitment to you. 
But for those who have not done it yet, this morning, Jesus is proposing to you. He's wanting you to enter into a relation with him. My methodology, how will I do that today? Today I'm going to use uh, the uh, institution of marriage as a metaphor. In other words, I'm going to be talking about entering into the relationship with Jesus Christ in the same way that you and I would liken uh, as a man my proposing to my wife. So I'm going to use the um, institution of marriage as a metaphor as you talk about as you talk about having a relationship with with Jesus Christ. Now in the word of God, in the word of God, a number of metaphors are used to describe the relationship that we have with Jesus. One, uh, in the Bible he says, I am the vine, ye are the, yes you're right, ye are the branches. That's one metaphor that he uses. Another is uh, the body, he says, I'm the head of the, and you are the body. Christ is the head, you are the body. Uh, a last illustration I want to use is the cornerstone of the building. Christ says, I am the cornerstone and you the church, you the people, you are the body. Now, uh, my dad was a bricklayer and I remember when we built our own house in Cryfontaine, my dad showing me the importance of the corner. He raises the corners first. Then from one corner to the other, there will be a line. And by following that line, you can make sure that each layer of the bricks that you lay are, are equal, are, are, are central, are straight. So the cornerstone is very important. And Christ says, I am the cornerstone. I am so important. So these are just three examples of different images or metaphors that are used in the Bible to describe the relationship that we have with our Lord. Today, as I said, we can to talk about Him, Jesus Christ, being the bridegroom and we, the church, being the bride. You remember in Revelation it says when he comes again, he comes as a, as a groom and the church will be waiting, adorned as a bride waiting for the groom. You remember that in, in, in Revelation? So we can use that, that same imagery in our uh, sermon this morning. Now why? Why did I choose the marriage institution as, as, as a metaphor today? Well, you know, as I would like to invite you to come into union with Christ forever. So we remember that in the marriage uh, relationship, you know, when I as a pastor, when I marry young people and many couples who I've married through the years, I always say to them from the word of God, till death do you part. And beloved, of course, you know, uh, the, the, the anti-type is always greater than the type. Yeah, the type is the marriage and the anti-type is our relationship with Jesus. Now, the type is until death you part. But the anti-type, the uh, relationship with Jesus, there will be no parting because beyond the grave when Jesus comes, that reunion, though that relationship with him will be continued forever and ever and ever. So in marriage we say, till death do you part, meaning that in our lifetime we stay together. I'm not talking about marriage now, uh, per se, but I'd like to say this while I'm on the point. The only honorable discharge from marriage is death. Now, let me say to you, natural death, it's death. That's the only honorable discharge from marriage. If you get married to your wife, to your husband, you in it forever. Forever. Now, uh, it's important that I use this because if there's no other human relationship that's more intimate and closer than the marriage relationship. Nothing else. And even, I know some I think, Pastor, is not the mother and the child no, it's a marriage relationship. There's nothing more intimate in human relationships 
nothing more closer than the marriage, than the marriage uh, relationship. And that is why I'm using that this morning to say, enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Today, just as a couple stands in front of the pastor and swears to be loyal to each other, so I hope when we say yes to Jesus today, we say, Lord, we will be we will be faithful to you because we know you are faithful to us. So let's start the message. Jesus is proposing to us. And I want to read a secondary scripture reading. Uh, Hosea chapter 2 verse 19. Let's go there. Hosea chapter 2 verse 19. Secondary scripture reading. Now this is, you remember Hosea, Hosea and Gomer? In fact, next week, my message will be about that. This week, we will examine the, bri the groom. Next week, we'll examine the bride. So please don't forget that. This week, we will examine the groom. Next week, we'll examine the bride and we'll get into Hosea. So my secondary scripture reading is Hosea chapter 2 and verse 19. Secondary, I read. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and all mercies. Betroth, it's an old word which really means I want to engage I want to get engaged to marry you. I want to get engaged to marry you. So indeed the Lord is proposing, He's saying to you and I, I want to marry you. I want to enter into a lifelong relationship with you. He is proposing. Our sermon title is Why You Should Not Reject. Why You Dare Not Reject This Proposal. So what are we going to do, beloved? We're going to examine the groom. We're going to say, Lord, why should we say yes to you? Why should I enter into a lifelong relationship with you? Can you be trusted? Am I safe with you? You know, if, if, if somebody were to come and ask for my daughter's hand in marriage, I'm going to examine him. I'm going to ask him, can I entrust my daughter into your care? Is she safe with you? So this morning, very respectfully, we are going to examine the groom and we're going to say, Jesus, with greatest respect, why should we say yes to you? Thank you, Jesus, that you are proposing to us. But why should we say yes? Why should we say yes? And so the first question we're going to ask Jesus, the first question is, Jesus, can you provide for me? Can you provide for me? I tell again, as a father, if a young man comes to me and asks my daughter's hand in marriage, I'll say happily yes, but young man, can you provide? If my daughter's hungry, you can't just say, I love you, I love you, I love you. As much as love is pivotal and very important in marriage, I tell you, we can't do it without food. So we are Jesus. If we say yes to you, can you provide? Can you provide for me? And then he says, well, turn in my love letter that I've written to you. Turn in my love letter to Psalm 50. And let's read verses 10 to 12. Psalm 50, reading verses 10 to 12. The question is, can you provide? Can you provide as we examine you, Jesus, as our groom? It says here, for every beast, of the forest is mine. And the cattle upon a thousand hills, he says. And I know the fowls of the air. I know them all. He says, and if I were hungry, I would not ask you. For everything that you see is mine. Lord, beloved, what the Lord is saying to us today, you can say yes to me because I own everything. The cattle upon a thousand hills, the fowls in the air, every wild beast, everything belongs to me. In other, in other words, what Jesus is saying, 
I have a, I have a great store. I have a great abundance source of goods. Beloved, nothing is impossible to him. Nothing is impossible to him because he owns everything. Philippians 4, 19, he says, But my God shall supply some of your needs. Did I read correctly? No, it says, But my God shall supply all your needs. Then it says, according to his riches in glory. I've just told you now, in Psalm 50 verse 10 to 12, how rich he is. Everything that you and I see belongs to him. That's how rich he is. And therefore he can say, if you marry me, if you say yes to me, he says in Philippians 4 19, I can supply all your needs. Friends, what a lovely God. What a God. I think, even before I go further, I am inclined to think I can trust Him. I can say yes to Him because He says, I can supply all your needs. Ephesians 3 verse 20, as we go further and deeper into the love letter that is written to us. Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, Now unto Him that is able to, to, ex, to exceedingly and abundantly supply all that we need, beloved. And to him be all honor and glory. God can indeed supply all needs. Psalm uh, uh, 37, verse 25, we read the other day, says to us, You know, I've been young, now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. For bread. Indeed, beloved, all we find to say, if you say yes to Jesus, he can indeed supply. All your needs. But I want you to know, um, uh, before I make that point, let me say this. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want. I don't need anything. I'll never be lacking. It's one, a modern translation says, You will lack nothing when you have the Lord as your shepherd. Indeed, we say, Yes, you will lack nothing. But beloved, let me bring some balance into this. Let me bring some balance into this. Jesus is not a supermarket where you can just go in and grab what you want to from the shelf. Sometimes our prayers uh, resemble that of a shopping list. We just ask, 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 ask. No. Our scripture being Matthew 6.33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. In other words, enter into a relationship with Jesus first. Then all these things that you need shall be added unto you. When you go into the text, you find that he speaks there in chapter 6 about uh, uh, roofing over your head, about clothing, about for, uh, food for you with all these things that we need but he says you will get those things but enter into a relationship with me first young people it's making sure that the horse is in front of the cart you see sometimes we want things we want things and we forget Jesus Jesus says get me first and what you need will follow. You know, it's very important. One person said, sometimes we focus on the gifts rather than focusing on the giver. You see, if you focus on the gifts, the gifts will break. The gifts will become stale. And if your focus was just on this gift, when it is stale, when it breaks, there is nothing more. But if your focus is on the giver, whenever you need what you do need, the giver will supply all your needs. That's why our memory text says, seek him first. Enter into a relationship, into a relationship with him first. Then all the other things 
that you I but need, that indeed will be added unto you. So, you know, beloved, I do believe we've seen uh, sufficiently uh, from the word of God. We can trust him. He can provide. The second question we want to ask him. Yes, Lord, you can provide. But very importantly, as a groom, can you protect us? Can you protect us? Now, you know, as a man, I know it's traditionally our role to be the protectors. And by the way, we are made in such a way, we are wired in such a way that protecting our family, protecting our wife comes naturally. So wives, I want to say to you, allow us to protect us. Don't, you know, be so strong that you say, well, I don't know you, I can do it myself. I tell you, we are wired in such a way that we want to protect you. We want to protect you. I was saying to somebody yesterday or just the other day, you know, um, I've seen pictures where men uh, would walk in front of the ladies and the lady would be carrying things and the man would just be walking in front with a, with a stick. And I said to myself, man, that man is not a gentleman. And somebody said, no, in this man's culture, they're walking out there in the wild, you know, and, and if animals come, his hands are free to protect his wife. So it's about protection. And I remember, I remember when my wife and I got married. When we got married, you know, we were sent to Bethel College in Butterworth Trans Sky. We were working there. And one day, I remember doc, the late Dr. Ingram Dupree and his wife came to visit, that, visit us that Sunday morning. It had rained and the water had flowed into our kitchen. The water had flowed into our kitchen. My wife and I were just married for a couple of days, you know, a couple of days. And 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 I I the kitchen was full of water. Then I came, then I said to my wife, you stand one side, I'm your husband, I will protect, you know, and I'm there and I'm sweeping the water out of the out of the kitchen. And as I said, uh, Dr. Ingram Dupree and, he, and, and his wife was standing there as well. And I made sure, you know, I don't know if you can see me, I made sure when I, when I took the broom, you know, I, I brought it back where my wife could see the bulging muscles that I have and just say, man, I married a, a strong man. But anyway, because I was sweeping the water out of the kitchen and something happened. A mouse ran into the house. Friends, instinctively, I wanted to scream and jump because, you know, I respect mice. I don't like to be in the same room with them. So when this mouse came in, that was my instinct, jump. But then I remember, hey, you're married. Protect your wife. <laughs> and I thank God the mouse turned around and ran out. He never embarrassed me. But friends, let's get to our message again. We're asking Jesus, can you protect me? And we're talking about a groom protecting his bride. Jesus, if we say yes to you, can you protect me? Oh, I love this verse, Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present Very present. Beloved, can you protect me? The word of God says he's a very present help just when we need him. The verse of the hymn says just when we need him, Jesus is near to comfort and cheer. Just when we need him. So the Bible says he's a present help in, in trouble. I like the message. The message says God is a safe place to hide ready to help when we need him. We shall be, it says, we shall be fearless at the cliff edge of a storm. We shall be fearless at the cliff edge of a storm, courageous in the sea storm and in an earthquake. Courageous! Because we're strong? No, but because he is a help. And he is our protection. Friends, I am not afraid because God is with me. Psalm 
um, Psalm says, Psalms 5, uh, 11 and 12 says, we can trust in him, trust in the Lord, for he will help us. Let them shout for joy, because he, because you, he says, you are our God. You will help us. We can trust him. We can shout for joy because he is our God. He will help us. So we need not, we need not be afraid, beloved, with God as our, um, as our husband, as our friend. Isaiah 41 verse 10, I love this word, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee. With my right arm of righteousness. Beloved, can he protect? Indeed, he can protect. He will strengthen us. He will help us. We need not be afraid. Psalm 23 verse 4 says again, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. We don't need to be scared. He is with us. Uh, Isaiah 43, 1 to 3 says, uh, uh, When you go through trouble, it will not overwhelm you. Because God will be there to protect you. So if we say yes to God, beloved, we can be assured of his protection. We can be assured, assured that he will indeed help us as we go through the trouble. But now you might say, Pastor Julius, I have a bit of a problem. What happens when calamity does strike us? What happens when we go through difficulties? Are you saying that God did not protect us there? I want to say this to you, beloved. God's protection comes in different ways. There are times when he will miraculously deliver me and out of and protect me in times of danger. He might choose to do that. But there must all, there might also be times when you will choose to give me protection through trouble. When you might say, it is my will that you may go through and endure some trouble, but I am still with you. Don't forget that. So God's protection then comes in the form of, of empowering us, of enabling us, of strengthening us, of helping us through that trouble. You remember a few sermons ago I shared um, 1 Corinthians, uh, 10, uh, 1 Corinthians um, 13 verse 10 with you where he says that he will not allow anything to come upon you that is more powerful or more heavier than you can bear. That's protection. God protects us. He says, I will not allow you to be destroyed by that experience. You will be strengthened, yes. And please don't forget God says, I am at your side. My friends, I am a husband for 30 odd years now. But I can't say to my wife, I will protect you even while you're going through trouble. Only God can. And as husbands, if we tell you, husbands, you and I don't have to pretend to be so strong. He will even protect you and I when we go through trouble. Daughter, son, if you say yes to Jesus today, you have his constant protection from trouble or while you are in trouble, when he will indeed lead you through. So, beloved, let us not stress. God will indeed protect us. We want to ask the second, the second, the third question now. The third question. Jesus, do you love us? Do you love us? I, I remember and I didn't ask my elder sister and her husband permission to say this, but I, I'm their brother, there's nothing they can do to me. You know, I remember when he came to propose, my brother-in-law, I remember as children we were a little naughty and we tried to listen in at the, at the door because we knew what was happening on the other side of the, of the door. 
and we heard uh, him asking that he wants to get married to my sister. And my dad, uh, uh, being a little naughty, you know, my dad asked him why. Because <laughs> I was, you know, can he marry my sister? And my dad asked him why. Uh, uh, he was first a little flustered, uh, and then he said, because I love her. <laughs> and my dad and mom, you know, uh, was so happy with that. Because I love I can imagine if someone must come ask for my daughter's hand in marriage and, and, and doesn't say that to me because I, I, I don't know whether I'll say yes. Love is important. Someone has said love is that cement that keeps the husband and wife together. It is that cement that keeps the marriage intact. Do you love Jesus? You want to marry your lovers? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know why? Because Jesus loved us so much that he was prepared to give himself up for us. In fact, beloved, that is what Romans 5, 8 is saying, that while we were yet sinners, while we yet were yet unlovingly ourselves, while we were yet controlled and driven by hatred for God and for that which is good, naturally. We hate that which is good. We hate God naturally. While we were in that state, God, Jesus, was prepared to Die for us because he loves us so much. Can you say no to such love? You know, I am an important person. Yes, I'm not just a little boy who was married, who was uh, born in Paul, in the Borland, in South Africa, Western Cape. No. I am an important person because the God of heaven gave his son for me and his son Jesus Christ gave up his life for me, for you. Just think about that. You are so precious that he died for you. Oh, beloved, is he in love with me? Oh, yes, he loves me. I remember one pastor was preaching, you know, and he, he was talking about how unloving we are as human beings, how unfaithful we are to God as human beings. But he says, you know, we can just be so thankful that God is crazy about us. I kind of just, I love that. Do you know? Do you know? In fact, I want you to do something. If you have a neighbor there with you sitting next to you, turn to that person right now and say, Jesus is crazy about you. Now, you don't have somebody sitting next to you. Look in the mirror if there's a mirror, if there's a mirror and say to the mirror, Jesus is crazy about you. Yes, Jesus is crazy about us. He loves us so much. That he gave up himself for us. Friends, if someone loves me that much, can I dare not to accept his proposal? He loved me so much that he gave his love, his life for me. The next question I will ask Jesus, as we examine you, will he ever leave us? Will he ever divorce us? Now, divorce is an ugly reality in our life. You, I know each one of us, I'm sure, knows somebody who has been divorced. In fact, maybe some of us are listening right now, have even gone to that experience yourself. 
There are various reasons, and we're not going to talk about that. We are just saying today that it is a reality. Men and women will stand in front of the altar with a family there uh, uh, watching the witnessing this, saying, I will love you till death do us part, and then something happens, and for the slightest reason, they will leave each other and divorce one another and forget the very vows that were made in the presence of God and in the presence of their love. So it is an ugly reality. I remember I heard a story. I heard a story. There was a man and a wife and some of they become, became estranged and uh, 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 the father came home one day asked the children, where's mommy? And the children said, well, Daddy, Mummy's gone to a theatre with Uncle So and So. And Daddy was very angry. Daddy wasn't converted. And Daddy went into the room, took the gun, and put the gun in his pocket, inside of his jacket, and walked to the theatre. When he came to the theatre, he asked, he said to this man, I'm looking for my wife. She's here with another man, and I'm, I'm going to shoot them now. And this man became very fearful of that. And he had a notice, a sign, flash on the stage while he kept this man outside. A sign flashed on the stage. If there is a man with another man's wife, let them please escape through the back door. If there is a man with another man's wife, please escape through the back door. They said about 17 couples escaped through the back door. I, I, I think we just want to illustrate that it is a reality. Some people even have an, a, a, a statistic of 50% of marriages end in divorce. But we ask God, Jesus, will you, as we consider your proposal, will you divorce us? Then Jesus says to us in Hebrews 13 verse 5, in that love letter, he says in the living translation, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus says, Hebrews 13, 5, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. King James says, I will neither for, I'll never for, leave you nor forsake you. I thank God for that. Because sometimes I'm so unfaithful to him. He still loves me. And he says, I, God says, I will never fail you. Beloved, if you say yes to Jesus, I want to tell you, you are saying yes to one who will never fail you, who will never abandon you. Oh, we know Romans chapter 8 from verse 35. Romans chapter 8 from verse 35 says, nothing will separate us from the love of God. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. And he says, nothing will separate us. Nothing will separate us from his love. He loves you. He loves me. And I know, beloved, divorce is not a thought in the heart of our divine groom. Jesus, who is proposing us to us today, says, I will never leave nor abandon you. I'm coming to the end now. I'm coming to the end. How says one more question. What about dowry? D-O-W-R-Y. What about a dowry? It's a biblical practice. In in South Africa or in, in this part of Africa, we talk of Nabola. What about dowry? A uh, dowry, sorry. What about dowry? Jesus, did you pay something for us? Did you pay something for us? Was there a dowry that you had to pay? Now, I'm going to tell you a story. Some time ago, I was still much younger. I saw a movie that I'll never forget. It was just simply entitled Johnny Lingo and Mahana. Johnny Lingo and Mahana. It was a short movie. It was about 
there was, a, you know, a, a, somewhere in the islands of the sea, uh, there was a community. And Johnny Lingo was a very handsome young man. And he was a very shrewd businessman. Very shrewd businessman. And um, everybody, every mother wanted a daughter to marry Johnny Lingo. And every daughter wanted to become his bride. And so whenever they heard Johnny Lingo was coming to their island, oh, they made themselves more beautiful and, you know, uh, just waiting for Johnny Lingo to come to their house and pop the question. Then the word went around. Johnny Lingo intends to pop the question. And every mother asked, is it my daughter? And every daughter asked, is it me? Then the word went around. Johnny Lingo is going to propose to Ma, to Mahana. Mahana! According to the people of those, of those islands, Mahana was one of the most unattractive ladies. Some of them said, we so attract, but he is going to propose to Mahana. Ma, ma, Mahana? They couldn't believe it. Some said, ah, oh, he's just playing a joke. He's playing a trick. He's playing a trick. In fact, even Mahana did not believe this. But then they word went around, on a certain day, Johnny Lingo is coming to ask for a hand in marriage. And so happened, the families came together and everybody was listening and to find out. They said, there's a catch somehow. Johnny Lingo, he's, there's going to be some catch. He's a shrewd businessman. He said, um, can I marry Mahana? I love her. And people were shocked. Then it came to the dowry, the price for the bride. And the people now nudge each other. They you know they show the. I never forget. They showed the a, 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 a view of two boys sitting in a tree, and they nudge each other. Now it's coming. Now it's coming. Now it's coming. And the one said to the other, "Hi, Johnny Lingo. Instead of giving cows, you'll probably just give the tail of the cow because Mahana is so ugly." They listen. Now, normally, normally in those islands, the dowry be. One cow, two cows, at most three cows in the inner silence. Then, how many cows? Johnny Lingo said, eight cows. The boy in a, in a, in a tree there nearly fell out of the tree. Eight cows, and eight cows for Mahana. She's so ugly, eight cows for Mahana. Friends, let me tell you, let me tell you, I'm going to talk about the bride next week, but let me say this to you now today, we are ugly in sin, we are ugly in sin, but I must tell you that, I must, let me just finish, complete the story, what happened, the day came, he did marry her, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, she came on the first day, she came out there, so be, and, 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 and Johnny Lingo said, I did not pay enough for you, because she was the most beautiful bride. Beloved, how much did Jesus pay for us? You and I, who are so ugly in our sin, Peter, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19 says, for as much uh, uh, for as much as we, we, we know, you know, Jesus did not purchase us with the price of silver and gold, but with his precious blood. How much did he pay for me? Not eight cows, not twelve cows, not a hundred cows. He paid. With his precious blood. Friends, I cannot say no to such a Lord. I want to say yes to him. Because let me tell you, beloved, we often speak about grace 
And yes, grace is God's. God saves us freely. We don't have to pay anything. Grace is with unmerited favor. God gives us the eternal life without having to pay a blue penny or no good works, nothing. There's nothing we can bring. Say to the cross, we cling. It's free. But Jesus had to pay for it. Jesus had to pay for it. precious blood. He hung on the cross of Calvary, paying that precious dowry for us. He said, God, I love Jonathan Julius so much, I am going to pay the supreme price. How many cows? No, God, I'm not going to give you cows. How much silver? No, God, I'm not going to give you silver. How much gold? No, God, I'm not giving you gold for Jonathan Julius. I am giving you my precious blood. That is why, beloved, this is a proposal I cannot reject. You know, when I say yes to Jesus and I enter into that relationship, let me give you some good news. He does not end or die when I die. It continues even while I'm resting in the grave. Sleeping in the grave, not having any uh, idea of time, concept of time. But while I'm sleeping and waiting for Jesus to come in the grave, that relationship continues with Jesus. It continues with him. And when he comes, you and I will be awakened and will re be reunited with Jesus. And that relationship will continue forever and ever. You dare not reject this proposal. Say yes to Jesus. And if you have said yes to him, renew your commitment to him right now, right today, because he is so precious. And I'm saying to you again today, Lord, please accept me anew into a lifelong, everlasting love relationship with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are indeed safe if we say yes to you. You can provide. You can protect. You love us. You will never separate yourself from us. Yes, you've paid a supreme price, the supreme price for us. You went to Calvary. We dare not reject your proposal. Please help us to say yes. And those of us who've said, yes, Lord, we rejoice. And today we want to renew our vows of commitment to you. Please keep us safe in the hollow of your hand, safe in this lifelong relationship. For we thank you in Jesus' name. Friends, thank you so much for being with us. Please remain in this relationship. You know, Peter said, man, I cannot go out of this relationship. He's like a dog going back on his vomit. He, say, he says, I must stay in this relationship. Just stay in this relationship. Please don't forget, we will go on, the sermon will be on YouTube this afternoon, and it will be on our radio, radio www vop.org.za There you click on the drop zone, listen to the radio, you click on that, then 
in the bottom left hand corner just click the play button and you can listen to our radio 24 7 and please tell others about our zoom this week we had a few problems next week we hope to use the um, uh, share page and use some graphics you know we, we, we're going to try we want to uh, reach uh, as many people on as many platforms as we possibly can but god bless you have a good day god loves you and he's coming back for you and for me praise god